Enjoying the taste of sweet foods is a basic biological adaptation that evolved to allow humans to detect hard-to-find, energy-rich foods. Sugar used to be hard to get. Fruit rots quickly after it ripens, and before refrigeration, it could only be eaten seasonally. But now, sugar is everywhere. What was once rare energy for survival is now part of countless foods and drinks. In 1822, Americans consumed just 6.3 pounds of sugar per year. By 2012, we consumed 96 pounds annually. Enter low-calorie sweeteners, or as they're called in scientific journals, non-nutritive sweeteners. Their purpose is to provide a sweet taste without the energy, or more specifically, the calories. They work by being hundreds of times sweeter than sugar, so foods require minuscule amounts of them to provide sweetness equivalent to sugar. But when you hear low-calorie sweeteners, many people think of problems, cancer, cravings, weight gain. But why? And is it scientifically true? Low-calorie sweeteners have been thoroughly studied and approved for use by hundreds of countries around the world. And since they've been approved, you'll find them in everything from yogurts and diet drinks to baked goods and popsicles. But if you bring up sweeteners at your next family dinner, you may start a heated argument. The belief that low-calorie sweeteners are harmful started with saccharin, an ingredient that pitted a saccharin-defending President Teddy Roosevelt against a skeptical FDA back in 1907. Studies in the 1970s linked saccharin to bladder cancer in rodents, and it wasn't until 2000 that scientists understood the process that linked saccharin to cancer. Proteins prevalent in male rat urine combine with calcium chloride and saccharin to form microcrystals that damage the bladder lining, eventually leading to rat tumors. Humans, thankfully, don't have those proteins. Another common fear surrounding the low-calorie sweetener aspartame is that methanol is a breakdown product, or a derivative that has been altered from a parent molecule. But methanol is also a breakdown product in fruit juices and tomatoes. One serving of tomato juice provides about four to six times more methanol than the same amount in one aspartame-sweetened beverage. Ingestion of sweet-tasting foods induces a sensory-specific satiety, meaning your sweet tooth is satisfied after eating that slice of birthday cake. Is this the case for low-calorie sweeteners? We know that these ingredients do not have the same metabolic impact on the body as regular or natural sugars. A 2010 experimental study, which gave participants sucrose, stevia, or aspartame, found that those who received the stevia or aspartame dose consumed significantly fewer calories at lunch and dinner, and reported no difference in hunger compared to those who were given regular sugar. So if these ingredients are making it possible for people to consume fewer calories, why are there questions about them causing weight gain? A few studies suggest low-calorie sweeteners are linked to obesity, but these tend to be observational studies, studies based on only what we see, which can't show causation. We know from randomized controlled trials, the scientific research gold standard, that low-calorie sweeteners do not cause weight gain and on average result in a very small weight loss. But low-calorie sweeteners continue to make headlines. Just like with scientific research, it's important to analyze these headlines closely so you can separate fact from fiction to make an informed decision.